we've only just begun to live. White lace and promises. A kiss for luck and we're on our way. We've only just begun. These are the opening lyrics of perhaps the most popular song of the 1970s. We've only just begun by a brother and sister duo called Carpenters. And Karen Carpenter, who was the lead singer, had a beautiful, beautiful voice, an alto voice, low, one of the prettiest voices of the 20th century. And she and her brother became very, very successful. They came from a musical family. Karen played the drums, but then her voice was discovered, and she went on to make all sorts of hit records and travel extensively and have Christmas specials for 10 years as the brother and sister duet called Carpenters. But the more successful Karen Carpenter became, the more unhappy she became. Karen Carpenter was a very small woman, very petite, and very pretty. But she did not like the way she looked. She felt, in her own mind, that she was overweight, heavy, fat. This was not true, but this is how she perceived herself. And so she started to go on diets. And when that didn't work, she started to starve herself and not eat at all. And when that didn't work, she would eat a little bit and then go into the bathroom and get rid of it. Karen Carpenter struggled with something called anorexia nervosa, an illness that was very little known in the 1970s. A number of you have struggled with it, or your daughters have struggled with it, or your granddaughters have struggled with it. It's an illness, a sickness, which affects mostly women, although sometimes men as well. And Karen Carpenter struggled with this for years. And as the decade went on, she became thinner and thinner and thinner. She went from 140 pounds to 130, 120, 110, 100, 90 pounds, 85 pounds. And her eyes were sunken in the sockets of her head. And you can see as you look at the album covers and the Christmas specials as the years go by, she's becoming more and more sunken and ill. And she tried to get help, and nobody knew how to help her. And by 1983, she had fallen to 83 pounds, and her voice was gone. And one evening, her heart stopped beating, and she died. It was a great loss for the musical world. Many of you remember that time, and perhaps you enjoyed her music. She had such a beautiful voice, but the struggle she had in her life, which is a struggle that all of us have in one way or another, is that she didn't like her body very much. And in the end, she lost her battle. Today in our gospel, in our first reading, we hear about bodies. Bodies. Our bodies. Yours and mine. First reading from 2 Maccabees, we hear about seven brothers who are devout Jews. And they are captured and are being persecuted, and what their torturers are doing is they're forcing them to eat pork. And for a devout Jew, they don't eat pork because that's not kosher. And so these seven brothers in front of their mother were tortured and forced to eat pork. They refused, and so they were killed one by one by one, in front of each other, in front of their mother. And they refused to give in and they gave up their bodies because they did not want to offend God. They did not want to sin. In our gospel, the Sadducees are trying to trap our Lord in a story, trying to get him to make a statement so they can use it against him. The Sadducees make up the story of seven brothers, and one of them marries a woman, then he dies. Then the second brother marries the same woman, 
he dies. And the third brother marries the same woman, he dies. You wonder what's the matter with these brothers. I would run away if I were the, it's a black widow, you know. But they marry this woman seven times and all of them die and then she dies. And then the question is posed, well, whose wife is she in the life to come? And Jesus says, you don't understand it. You've got it all wrong. When people are in heaven, they are not given and married. They're not given in marriage. They are like the angels. And Jesus goes on to say that God is the God of the living, not of the dead. For to him all are alive and that our bodies will rise. Our bodies will rise from the dead. I think that each one of us is unhappy about some aspect of our bodies. We don't often talk about it, but I think we are. Going back to original sin with Adam and Eve, what happened in the beginning? They eat the piece of fruit, their eyes were opened, they realized they were naked, and they hid themselves out of shame. At the very beginning of the fall of man, there was this twisting of our understanding of our sexuality, understanding of our bodies, understanding of ourselves. And so it's no wonder that all of us in one way or another have this tension or we struggle with the way we look. So we think, boy, I wish I were taller. I wish I were shorter. I'm too thin. I'm too fat. I'm too big, I'm too small. I wish I had less hair. I wish I had more hair. I wish I had more hair. <laughs> Our ears are too big. Our nose is too big. Too feminine, too masculine, not enough. We think these things. I wish I wasn't sick. I wish I didn't have a terminal illness. I wish I didn't have a disability. I wish I, my body worked better. And yet the truth of the matter is, despite sometimes our struggles, and you have your own and I have mine, despite that, we are very, very beautiful. And God loves us just the way we are, because he made us. But you and I live in a world today where the God or the goddess that is worshiped is not the Lord, the true and living God, our Lord Jesus Christ. No, the God that is worshipped in our popular culture is the body, lust, the flesh. It is a cult of the body. That is the God of our age. And if you don't believe me, turn on network television any night of the week and you will see what we worship. And so we struggle with this because we think that we have to be young and beautiful and handsome. If you look in popular culture, anybody above 35 years old is written off. All that matters is that group there that can buy things so they can sell advertisement. And beauty is prized. Can't have any wrinkles, can't have any bumps, can't have any bruises. Age and wisdom, not so much. Youth, beauty and strength, that's what's prized. We have a culture that is focused on the body through pornography, which addicts millions of men, men in this parish, and abuses women, women in this parish. We live in an age where youth is prized, success, physical ability, and all that matters is what we look like. This is the cult of the body and the time in which we live. And on the flip side, of course, there is a hatred of the body, too. And so we pierce it and abruise it and tattoo it and hate it and twist it and change it and inject it and addict it and all these things. The devil is having his way with us today in our culture. He is. And the fact of the matter is this, and we would do well to remember this, that no matter what we look like, the shape of our body, whether we are a model or very plain, whether we are a great athlete or not so good, 
whether we are young or old, tall or th short, big or thin, all of us, everyone, someday this body of ours is going to wear out and it's not going to work anymore. And then we are going to go and meet our maker. All of us are going to die one day and our body is going to be buried in the earth and it's going to be eaten by worms. That's the truth of it, folks, no matter what we look like or who we are. That's the truth. But the soul lives on. The soul. That's the most important thing. And so as Christians, what do we do with the state of affairs that we see in the world today, but also reflected in the mirror in our own lives? First, first, we have to understand and accept that God loves us just for who we are. That's what our parents told us when we were growing up, or our teachers, or our grandparents. It's the truth. We are beautiful. We are handsome. We are fearfully, wonderfully made in God's image, no matter what we look like or who we are. Isn't that marvelous? It's the truth. And as Christians, we have to understand that this body of ours is a temple of the Holy Spirit and to be used for good, that we don't worship it, which is very foolish, and we don't abuse it, which is very wrong. It is this temple that we have to care for and we have to take good care of it with all that that means. But be careful that we don't focus on the external ourselves and then something is lost. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit and God loves us very, very much. Also this too. And that's also what the readings are talking about this weekend as we near the end of the church year. Each of us, our bodies, someday will rise from the dead. Really? Really. We pray it every single Sunday in the creed. We look for the resurrection of the body. We look for the resurrection of the dead. Our bodies will rise at the end of time when Jesus comes again the second coming at the last judgment, our bodies we will be reunited with our souls. And if we are judged worthy, they will go off glorified body and soul into the kingdom of God. And if we are judged not worthy, we will go off body and soul to an eternity of punishment in hell. Our bodies will rise. Jesus' body rose. We are united with him. We too will rise. Father, what are we going to look like we're going to look exactly like we're supposed to look. Free from the ravages of age and sin and hurt and life. We will look fabulous. That's the promise. This is our faith. This body of ours is so beautiful and so noble that it will rise from the dead one day and we will be wonderful. But until that time, we ask the Lord to help us to realize that this life is a gift, not to worship it, not to abuse it, to reverence it. Karen Carpenter died in 1983 and the world mourned her passing. Many books have been written, many movies have been done. Her life served as a warning to generations of women to this very day understanding about eating disorders and body image and anorexia and bulimia, which is a great suffering for so many people and an illness and a hurt. Karen Carpenter suffered because she didn't like the way she looked. And many of us in our own way struggle with the same thing. But let's remember that God does love us, that our soul is very beautiful, and that this body of ours, which is a reflection of the soul, will rise. Our body will rise from the dead. And we will look great from the inside out. Or put another way, or put another way, we have only just begun to live.
May God bless you.